so supreme. Ooh, ooh, but the natural beauty. No need no makeup to be a cutie. She's a queen, so supreme. Yeah. And when they ask what a good woman's made of, she's not afraid and ashamed of who she is. She's royal, yeah, so royal. And I want her in my life. I never knew anyone so one of a kind. No, no, the way she moves to her own beat. She has the qualities of a queen, my Nubian queen. Hey, Webmaster here. I stay connected to Freedom with the Freedom SK hey. app. Simply search for the Freedom app we in the Android's Play Store or the Apple's App Store and download it. Enjoy world-class radio at its best, anytime, anywhere. Become a Freedom Apper today. RIA Easy Money Transfer Limited, located on West Independence Square Street, Bastyr St. Kitts, and the Solomon Arcade Nevis, offers you safe and reliable transfers at great low rates and fees to 507,000 locations worldwide, with a pickup time of just 15 minutes after your transfer. And for even more ease of doing business, we home deliver and direct bank deposits in selected countries. So if anytime you want to send money to family, friends, and loved ones, at RIA, we've got you covered. With over 30 years of experience moving money quickly, efficiently, and securely across 160 countries. Give us a call at 465-3325 in St. Kitts or 469-3325 in Nevis. Opening hours Monday to Friday, 8 a.m to 4 p.m. 8.30 in Nevis and on Saturdays 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. RIA Easy Money Transfer Limited. The St. Kitts Credit Union is making mortgages easy. Becoming a homeowner whether purchasing or building has never been easier. The SKCU is here to help. Apply online via our website www.skccu.com or schedule an appointment today with one of our friendly loan officers to discuss your options. St. Kitts Credit Union, the best place to borrow, the best place to save. If you live here in St. Kitts and your town called here, there's only one place that you should be. Maybe be driving in the evening and you need some fuel. Go straight to Delta, don't be a fool. Get your cooking gas, gas. Petroleum needs ULSD. Everyone in the region is shouting Go Delta. Premium gasoline and a fully stocked sea store. So there's only one place you should be Delta Petroleum, baby. Freedom listeners and welcome to another edition of Issues. It's uh, 145 and we're going to go straight into our conversation for this afternoon. Welcome to one and all, whether you're viewing by the Facebook page, YouTube channel, or listening to us live via the FM band, or on our mobile app, or in our website. So many ways to tune into 106.5. Thank you so very much. I'm EK and I'm here with some lovely ladies and they've got some information to share with us this afternoon. I think they're from the Agriculture Department, I'm correct? Yes, technically. 
technically, formally, technically, in between. It's in between, kind of, sort of, in between. You, but you give me the 411. We will give you, you the 411. We, <laughs> we're going to hook you up. We're going to hook. We're gonna fix it for you. Don't mm-hmm. worry. Don't worry. So, good afternoon mm-hmm. again, ladies and gentlemen, for those persons listening out there in Radio Land and for those persons who tuned in online on social media. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> you follow drama, <laughs> I'm just messing with you. But yes, uh, my name is Shaira Flanders, and I am the head of the Media and Communication Unit in the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, and Marine Resources. And I am joined by... Kyla gibson Door, and I'm the Senior Business Advisor in the Ministry of Small Business, Entrepreneurship, and Cooperatives. And uh, together... Yeah, I remember your friend, sorry, I apologize. <laughs> that's okay, but that's But she always okay. distracting me, every time she come here, yeah. but anyhow. I can't anyhow. with him, you know, I cannot with him. You messed up my whole speech. I was just about to give you, and together, and I was going to sing... <laughs> Soprano, she was so, going to sing alto and do an introduction. and You with this? <laughs> <laughs> she, she even told me what this, what, what's going on. I'm just following the cue. Okay, no, then. together we are actually <laughs> here to remind all those persons we know. We've seen the chatter, we've seen the posts, and we've got the questions. But we just made, sh- we wanted to make sure that we reminded the general public that Thursday, 28th March, is our highly anticipated Easter Agri Night Market. So Mm. the Agri Night Market is once again, once again coming up, and this time it's the Easter edition, and this is going to be our extravaganza. Wait, wait, let me say it one more time. This is going to be our extravaganza. You get it, Ike? Those are the word (laughs) syllables, young lady. (laughs) That's just because you're featuring is eggs. Your feature is egg extravaganza. So on the word. Can't even catch it. You're so behind. I'm just asking I a cannot. question. First of all, I was making. Oh my god! How am I supposed to I know that? I put emphasis on the egg so that I know other people oh out god. there are gonna catch it. But I had Not to make a sure. Soul. Only the two are you. <laughs> really? It's I'm sure someone <sighs> caught it. How much you want, bet? We're ecstatic. Well, I bet I you get it. Egg? It's gonna be excellent. You get okay. it? You get it? No. <laughs> Proceed. Anywho, we are actually getting ready to host mm. our Easter Agri Night Market. And this version of the night market, if you can't already tell, we are going to be featuring eggs. And the reason why we are featuring eggs, we want to make sure that we highlight the poultry sector. Mm. We had sorrel that was featured in December for our Agri Christmas edition. Mm-hmm. And we also focused on the diamond back squid. And so this time around, I know most persons, you see eggs as decoration during Easter time. Mm. So no, we are not encouraging you to to tell the tale that bunnies lay eggs. However, from a, local st- <laughs> from a local standpoint, because we know the reason Easter's true meaning, but yeah. we wanted to ensure that from a local standpoint, we took advantage of this opportunity to highlight the poultry sector and we're going to give the spotlight to our egg producers. Okay. Right now we have over 54 egg producers on the island. Yes, we have over 54 54? Egg, yes, we have over 54 egg producers on the island. Judgment. And yes, they listen, let me tell you. They do a pretty good job providing eggs for the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. Wow. I didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah, big up, big we, up to them, boy. Yes, we have over 54 egg producers and we want to make sure that egg is not forgotten. Mhm. We have egg in abundance, and we want to ensure that at the Agri Easter Night Market, you're going to get the special deals that you've been looking for to do your baking. Mm -hmm. When you wake up Sunday morning and you want to make your special Easter Sunday Mm omelette, you need to come to the Agri Night Market so that you can purchase your eggs there. Also, as a part of the Easter Night Market celebration, of course, the highlight is on our organic produce and for those persons who seem to forget every year. Did a whole wheat egg answer though? <laughs> I'm just saying. You can eat whole wheat egg. 
But the Rasta's there. I mean, Who what, so what, veggie egger. I thought Rasta not eating egg at all. You're speaking veggie, on behalf of yourself. Oh, wait, veggie, let, wait, 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 wait. Let me guess. Veggie. Are you asking this question because you're asking for a friend, Ige? Of course it is. <laughs> you know this. And you are your best friend. Mm. Who? <laughs> then about that part really? There. I got a best friend in there, Mikey. But anyhow. You know, I, so, yeah. Father, give us faith. <laughs> so, yes. On? We are actually promoting Mm -hmm. the buying and the selling of organic produce. Now, when you really think about it, the best time for you to actually purchase your, your, your produce is the Thursday before Good Friday. So for those persons who technically forget each year that Easter, me, I'm really creeped up on us. Like, wait, Easter is the Easter holiday is this weekend. This weekend. That's all I've been hearing all week. Wait. Good Friday is Friday? Friday coming. Yes, it is. Good Friday is Friday. So we don't want you to get caught off mm-hmm. guard. So Thursday, the 28th of March, 2024, as in at the Bastia Public Market. Yes. As in from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. Yes. Everybody don't get come. caught slipping. Everybody come. Exactly. Don't get caught slipping. Mm. Thursday is your day to come down to the market and shop for your sweet potato, to shop for your carrots, to shop for your lettuce, to shop for your guava cheese, shop for your soursop cheese, shop for your bullfoot soup, shop for your black pudding, <laughs> shop for your coconut tart. For yes. those, but yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. So how come you yeah. say yes for so other things? Th- I know. For what? Shop for your coconut dumplings. Yes. yes, we have coconut dumplings, salt fish. I mean, you name it. It's mm-hmm. going to be anything that you can think of that is Easter food. Anything that is Easter themed, Easter related, local food, it's going to be at the Bastille Public Market. The Easter version is usually one of my favorites. I, I think I'm going to come to that one. Yeah. Yes, please. Finally, do. you know what? You don't I invite me. So I invited you the last time and you did not. What? I ain't see you. You don't so invite I don't me. I'm Mr. Mina come. I'm Mina come because I, invited I have to work. <laughs> you don't invite me. I turn life on me. I put this on Freedom's table. I invite. Public, you believe this? Public, I invited EK to the night market. I'm inviting him again. Come down and patronize, support again, local, eh? eat local, support local, buy from your own. That is the focus right. of the Agri Night Market events. We're giving a platform to our vendors as well as our farmers and our fishers. And speaking of our fishers, the Bastia Fisheries Complex will also be selling fresh fish. So you're going to get uh-uh. your snapper, your lobster, I'm telling you, your conks. Trust me, it's going to be available at the Bastia, the, the, the Bastia Fisheries Complex stall. And it's usually located on the right side as soon as you enter, mm-hmm. right in the little nook in the corner. Mm-hmm. And the fish usually goes first. Mm-hmm. Always. Mm-hmm. The fish goes first. So for those persons who think, oh, you know, I'm going to swing down there about 6 o'clock and buy some <laughs> You fish. get no, wet. No, no. You better go early. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, people usually wait on the outside of the gate to buy fish through the gate before we even open the gate. Right. So what time you open? 5 p.m. Okay. But they line up 4 o'clock and so, so they could <laughs> get in and <laughs> get this fish early. But I mean, uh, understandably so, for the rastas who don't eat eggs. You check? Mm-hmm. That is it. <laughs> that is it. You're looking out for us. I like you. Yes, but we are also partnering with the Ministry of Small Business, mm-hmm. Entrepreneurship, Yes, and cooperatives. And so mm-hmm. this lovely young lady will tell you all about this partnership. Yes, give it yes. to us straight. Yes. yes, we are sister ministries under the same minister. So for Agri Night Market, we partner. We collaborate to put on this event. And our small business vendors, they come out and they set up their stalls as well so that they can play their trade and receive some exposure and some income for their small business. Mm. So when you come, you'll get entertainment, you'll get the food, and you'll get maybe a hat, a clothes, mm-hmm. um, maybe an air freshener for your car, for your house. Oh, yeah? Various products we'll have the on candles, display. Yes, the candles. Favorite. Yes, yeah, I need some really candles. Nice. candles the uh, scented I need, candles. Yes, some. so please come. I need some, for oh. sure. Yes. I know how you feel, friend. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel this yes, yeah, we, the, the, the scent is really nice. I was mm. putting together her package because we went to St. Croix in uh, 
February, and mm-hmm. I was putting together her package, and I was making sure they're all good and nice, and I just smell, open them, and I smelt them, and it was just like taking Lovely. you to paradise. So just wait, don't she number for that? Just, please. just yeah. come and. Uh, I've been and pooping for the longest while, but <laughs> yes, because she sent me a sample, right? And Lord, it was nice, have right? Mercy. Trust me, the first one that I had from the cat. Listen, small businesses, eh? Small yes, bit, they're very talented. We very, have very talented products here in the It Federation. was, you know, when they well. say big things come in small packages, mm-hmm. the scent was big and the package was small. Talent. It was small and cute, and I was like, uh, yeah. it was so strong. Mine had it a little message, too. Very nice. Yeah, oh. <laughs> You're special. Okay, I know. Watch it. Oh. I almost cried away the good thing as a rest of What? <laughs> almost. <laughs> almost. We're going to have well, all of those things though. available at the Agri-Night Market. And it goes without saying. You come to the Agri-Night Market, yes, you're going to come to eat. Yes, there's camaraderie. But aside from that, we also have entertainment. We yeah, let's always get to the entertainment. have. Let's go. We always have entertainment. That's the good part. Yes, we always have entertainment. So we are looking forward to none other than DJ Sugar Bowl. Uh-huh. Sugar. <laughs> DJ Sugar Bowl. Yes, he is going to be our DJ. Um, at the Agri Easter Night Market, and it's always a good time. I absolutely love when she, I just love when Sugar Bowl is doing his thing because he entertains. Yeah, he he, he, <laughs> he interacts with people. He really does. Crowd, he interacts yes. and yeah, it it just gives you it's it's just like an additional feel to the night market uh-huh. because yeah, it's a reminder that this is actually what we want the public market to feel like. You know, it's a reminder. Um, this is what the, the, the public market is all about. This is what we want. Each time we have this event, you want persons to feel comfortable while they're, while they're shopping. Yes. You know, I see you. Maybe I haven't seen you since last year. And the night market is the thing that brings us together. Mm-hmm. And we could wave and chat to each other and mm-hmm. ask, oh, wait, what are you eating? Where you got that from? This right. stall over there. And yes, that's the feel that we, that we want. And he also assists. Um, with the announcements as well, which is pretty good because during the night market, you're going to hear every maybe 30 minutes um, about the special deals that are offered at the various stalls. So you have to pay attention and listen because you don't want to miss out on any of the deals. You might have discounts. We already know that they're going to be th- there's going to be the, the major discounts on the eggs, um, but various vendors might actually on the night let you know in an announcement that Mm -hmm. we are going to have maybe 50% off on this. Maybe you're going to get 20% off on pumpkins. Buy two, get one free. That sort of thing, Mm -hmm. which is... Yeah, which is a really, really exciting time for you to shop and get all of your stuff early. And if you don't want to buy your dumplings already done, then you have to purchase your flour from the agro-processors because the agro-processors, they make their flour from scratch. Some might make breadfruit flour. Yes. Some might make cassava flour. The green fig. The green fig flour. Oh, my goodness. It's true, the green fig. Yes. Hmm. And those yeah. sold I well. never had that. Yes, it's true. So how can you never bring that on me? Be, oh, okay, I have to. <laughs> I never bought one for you, for true. I can't. I, I will admit. I okay. I see. You don't come up here, come top while you sing it. I, anyhow. But I asked you the last time if you didn't want me to buy black pudding. I you didn't respond. What is it going on here now? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll have giveaways as well. So come and maybe you'll win something. Mm-hmm. We'll also have. Someone playing the saxophone, and yes. we have oh, okay. steel, pla- steel, steel pan, pan as mm-hmm. well. Yes, so it's a night of entertainment and socializing. So mm-hmm. it's one to remember, one to experience. So we invite you to come. Right. Are the charge going or just come? No, and that is the best part. The admission is free. Registration mm-hmm. has a cost, but the admission is okay. free. So bring your friends, your family, your loved ones. The kids, especially the children, are going to love it. They the absolutely, lime. yeah. They, it's a nice lime. It's a, I mean, and to be honest, the next day is a holiday, so you're staying out until 10 p.m. Too easy. Too easy. Too easy. I like that. Exactly. So come and enjoy. Um, 
Shop till you drop. Get the best out of the Agri Easter Night Market. Just a reminder for those persons who have not yet registered, this is your final opportunity. When I tell you the last time we checked, we had, I think, maybe only six spots that were available, and that is because we could only accommodate a limited number of space. Mm. And this limited space means that you may or may not get squeezed in to secure your booth early. So you have to go to the Department of Agriculture at La Grite St. Kitts or the Ministry of Agriculture located at Port Zante or the Bastia Public Market. If it's easier for you to go down by the public market, then go to the public market now and ask for a registration form so that you can fill it out. The registration fee is only $10, a very small $10. Um, and it's... it's $10? Yeah, it's, okay. to be honest with you, yeah, it's... Very affordable, man. I'm telling you, it's only $10. It's always, yeah, it's $10. And that's it. That's why I said a very small $10. <laughs> <laughs> very small $10. But that, that, that... That ten dollars is going to go a very long way, because from five p.m. to ten p.m. you kill it, just you, like you, you I mean, <laughs> you you you, just, you kill it. You're going to make a kill. You're making it back. You're making it back. Yeah. You can come on. Profit. Of course. Nothing but profit. That's what is buying and selling. That's what this platform is. You're promoting the buying and the selling of our local goods as well as our services and our products from our small business owners. Mm -hmm. So we want to encourage persons to secure their spots early. If you have any questions and you'd like to ask, the number to call is 467-1016. That is the Ministry of Agriculture. Or you can call 467-1841. You can also send an email to moa at gov.kn. Any information that you need, please feel free to contact us. And Small Business as well has a contact that I'm sure you'd like yes. to share. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can contact us at 467-1203. We invite persons to follow our Facebook page where we put out information for you, which is valuable. And it's SBDC SKB. Yes, so we put out a lot of business tips, any programs that are coming up because we do a lot of training any regional programs that will benefit you guys mm -hmm. we put it on our facebook page so we just want you to stick and stay with the ministry of small business so that we can help you to grow your business awesome mm -hmm. yes and before we wrap up just a reminder as well now we have the agri night market that is going to be held on thursday which is let me make sure i said that it is tomorrow so that persons get an idea <laughs> why I say you have to go today and get it done. That is tomorrow, Thursday the 28th. Tomorrow is the last, probably tomorrow morning, if there is a space still available. So to be honest, today really is the last um, okay. for you to squeeze in and get an opportunity to secure your stall at the Agri Easter Night Market. And, of course, we have other celebrations that are coming up because the Ministry of Agriculture is always cooking up something. Mm. You know we're always busy, mm. always active. Yes, that's right. <laughs> and so we have major initiatives that are coming up as well, and you're going to see lots of that coming on stream. But... While we are celebrating the Agri Easter Night Market, the registration for the Agriculture Open Day is also available as well. So for all those persons who are wondering, yes, the registration is open. And for those persons who are also wondering where, you can get them at the same locations okay. if you needed to. Okay, so if you want to get Night Market now and you want to get Open Day early as well, when you go to the location, ask them for both. Good to go. Thank right. you so much for having us again. All right, ladies, thank, you, thank you so much for joining us and have yourself a great day and I'll see you tomorrow evening. You're better. Hopefully. You're better. Yes. <laughs> Who side you on? You're better. Well, I'm encouraging you, can, well, you, you to I'm going to buy you something for you. And what bring you your want? friends. Agri Easter Night Market 2024. <laughs> I, I am I buying something for Maurice. You can buy the, the candle want, that he loves. I don't want a candle. I don't want some coconut that. I can't. What kind of candle? You're like fruity. You're like... When he comes, Woody. he can pick it out. Wait, 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 wait. I'll take a yeah. rosy one. But you could come down and pick it up. I could get it for you early so that it's not sold out. And rosy. then you could, you could come and you could collect it when you reach down. I'm going to get it for you and then just collect it there. To make sure he comes. Make sure wait down Let that. him come and pick what? it up with you. <laughs> Who said Joanna? 
<laughs> a candle and a coconut tart. Got it. Ah? You shot. Ain't, a co- ain't one, yes? A coconut tart? No, by the way. Wait, no, one, no, come co- you know. no, by the way, no one coconut you, tart, woman. So, who the, so how many coconut tarts? One coconut, coconut tart? Well, what? Man, uh, okay. How, when how Petra else am I co- supposed to? When Petra been coconut tart, is three and four. You buy wow. one coconut tart. You see, I can't. There's an you unspoken see, you rule. See. You buy one coconut tart? So, one? So, so wait. Well, so how wait. much for one? So <laughs> <laughs> Ten dollars, no, no, that is not it. Fix up yourself, friend. Wow. Fix up yourself. No, but you didn't no give me the tart. specifics. I thought you were tasting the coconut tart. Isn't that what you do when you go to the night market? Even you taste and then you're like, oh wait, I like friend, this. Let me get no. three more. You sample when you get dear, but if somebody buying something for you, it's not a sample. But man, if you like the coconut tart, yeah, to suppose what? you're like, you know what, man, man. Um, well then, let me get familiar then. Are you? D- <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let buddy. me get familiar. I can't take him If it's an acquired taste, so let me let me get. Eat and eat until you. There you go. Enjoy. So by the time I reach the fourth one, I say yeah, bye. I like it too. Ah, uh, bye, family. You bye. can't test from one. Jeez. That's how we be. <sighs> you know what? Okay, okay. Whatever you Good. See, there you go. You see how nice it is to cooperate. I will work it's on it. Always nice. I will try my best. There you go. With the coconut tart. The tarts, sorry, tarts. tarts. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, see you all at the Agri right. Easter Night Market tomorrow. Please don't miss this version. This is going to be a hot edition. A hot, hot, hot edition. Okay? Right. Thank all you. Right. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your day. All right, folks, we're going to take a little break here. And then when we come back, uh, we'll probably open the lines or maybe join the press conference that's going on right now with the other room, Mark Brantley. So stick and stay. Hey, Webmaster here. I stay connected to Freedom with the Freedom SKN app. Simply search for the Freedom app in the Android's Play Store or the Apple's App Store and download it. Enjoy world-class radio at its best, anytime, anywhere. Become a Freedom apper today. RIA Easy Money Transfer Limited, located on West Independence Square Street, Bastyr St. Kitts, and the Solomon Arcade Nevis, offers you safe and reliable transfers at great low rates and fees to 507,000 locations worldwide, with a pickup time of just 15 minutes after your transfer. And for even more ease of doing business, we home deliver and direct bank deposits in selected countries. So if anytime you want to send money to family, friends, and loved ones at RIA, we've got you covered. With over 30 years of experience moving money quickly, efficiently, and securely across 160 countries. Give us a call at 465-3325 in St. Kitts or 469-3325 in Nevis. Opening hours Monday to Friday, 8 a.m to 4 p.m. 8.30 in Nevis and on Saturdays 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Ria Easy Money Transfer Limited. The St. Kitts Credit Union is making mortgages easy. Becoming a homeowner, whether purchasing or building, has never been easier. The SKCU is here to help. Apply online via our website, www.skccu.com, or schedule an appointment today with one of our friendly loan officers to discuss your options. St. Kitts Credit Union, the best place to borrow, the best place to save. If you live here in St. Kitts and your tank on here, there's only one place that you should be. Maybe driving in the evil and you need some fuel. Go straight to Delta, don't be a fool. Get your cooking gas. Petroleum needs ULSD Everyone in the region is shouting Go Delta Premium gasoline in a fully stocked sea store So there's only one place you should be Delta Petroleum Go baby Delta. A special thank you must be said to the Bank of Nevis Limited, an entity which has contributed to the meet since 2018. 
the Bank of Nevis has truly demonstrated that they are improving the quality of life and have a vested interest in the development of our students and people of Nevis. The TDC Interschool Championship. We made history this year because Nevis served as a venue for days three and four of the 2024 edition of the TDC Interschool Championship in what was dubbed an historic multi-city event. The meet event is hosted annually by SKN Athletics, the association responsible for track and field in the Federation. This year, the facilities at the Nevis Athletic Stadium were used to host the track events and some field events. Congratulations to the Charles E. Mills Secondary School, SEMS, taking a first place spot. The Charlestown Secondary School for placing second. The Bastia High School for taking the third place spot. We are proud of the work which was put in place to make the meet possible and of the remarkable success of all of the athletes who participated. We also commend the coaches for their continued hard work in preparing the athletes throughout the year and commendations to the team at the Ministry of Education and Sports who worked in the background to ensure that logistics were in place to host the meet. I remember well when the Honorable Troy Leibert, Minister of Youth and Sports, came to the cabinet and indicated that due to repairs at the Kim Collins Stadium in St. Kitts that he had been asked to partner. And we agreed, we partnered, we provided the venue, we provided busing, we provided support, we persuaded our ferry operators and our water taxis to offer discounts, and I believe that the meet went remarkably well. In fact, I have had some informal reports from the SKN AAA to say that this was one of the most successful meets in terms of returns that they would have had. And so we say kudos. It shows what can happen when St. Kitts and Nevis choose to work together. We take this opportunity to highlight some of our student athletes who currently participate, you know, have been selected to participate in regional tournaments and competitions. For our under-15 cricketers, we got the news today that the Maury Prentice, Rondre Daniel, Carice Bolo Farrell, and Aidan Williams were selected as part of the Leeward Islands under-15 team. Indeed, Aidan Williams, whom we know his father is former West Indies opener, Stuart Williams, and his uncle is former West Indies middle order batsman, Ronaco Morton. So he has cricket in his blood, and we are hopeful that all four, the Maury Prentice, Rondre Daniel, Carice Bolo Farrell, and Aidan Williams, that they will do well. They're currently in Antigua, will be playing several matches over the next few days. Congratulations to them, to the Navy's Cricket Association, their coaches, and all who are involved in creating avenues for our students and our young people to pursue sport. We also extend congratulations to Kalia Jones, under 20 female, Abija Nem Nemhari, under 17 males, Kimani Newton, on the 17 males, and Caldrice Chapman, on the 17 females, Tiana Leibert, on the 20 females, who were all selected to represent the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis at the 2024 Carifta Games. The games will take place in Grenada, Spice Island, from March 30th to April 1st, and so we commend these athletes from Nevis who will be part of the mix in Grenada. Two young divisions, Troy Nisbet and Skyler Connor, along with coach James Weeks, would have traveled to the Bahamas to represent the Federation in the Carifta 2024 Aquatics Championship. Bear in mind that the Federation is now making a serious thrust in terms of swimming, and I'm proud to say that in the Federation, Nevis is leading in that regard. And so we look forward certainly to more young people getting involved in the sport of swimming, and we commend definitely Troy Nisbet and Skylar Connor, who have gone off to the Bahamas as the team from the Federation for that championship. Nisbet will compete in the male 13 to 14 category, and Connor in the female 11 to 12 category. We are indeed proud of them, their coaches, families, and other members of their support systems. Youth Month 2024, the Department of Youth will be celebrating Youth Month during the month of April under the theme, Inclusivity for Sustainability. And you will have more information on that, certainly, as that information becomes available. Golf Insurance, Bonnie Limited, Nevis Primary Schools Championship. 
the much anticipated Golf Insurance Limited, Bunny Limited, Golf Insurance Nevis Primary Schools Championship, also referred to by all of us as the Nevis Mini Olympics, it will be held on Wednesday, 3rd April at the Nevis Athletic Stadium beginning at 11.30 a.m. As I would have indicated, it's a half holiday on that day. And the half holiday really is intended each year to give you opportunity so you can go and get yourself ready to get to the track to root for your school, whatever that school may be. I started my primary school education at the Gingerland Primary School, now called the Joyce and Libert Primary, and I finished my primary school education at the Prospect Primary, now called the Ivor Walters Primary. So you'll forgive me if I want to wish Joyce and Libert and Ivor Walters all the success in the world. However, we understand just as Sims dominates at the inter-high level that there is a juggernaut called the Charleston Primary School which tends to dominate at this level as well. We also have St. Thomas's Primary which has done very well over the years and challenged on many occasions Charleston Primary. We have, of course, EPPS, Elizabeth Pemberton Primary, one of the smaller schools. And we have, of course, the schools in St. James, St. James Primary and the Violet O. Jeffers Nichols. We also have, I believe, competing would be the Mod Cross Preparatory School. I'm not sure, does the Nevis, what is it called, Nevis Academy, I think also competes. But all the schools, we are encouraging them. We are wishing them all the best. I'm hopeful that even Montessori will be competing. I'm trusting and hoping that they all do well. At the end of the day, wear your colors, support your team, and enjoy your half holiday. We want to commend Golf Insurance, which has sponsored this event now for the past 30 years, and Bank of New Innovation Limited, Bonnie, which came forward last year as title sponsor. The meet will be held under the patronage of Ms. Teresa Brown and Mr. Delvis Pemberton, both are past athletes of the Joyce and Liber Primary School, and we anticipate seeing participation from nine primary schools on the island. Nine. So that's significant. Go out, support your team, and be a part of it. There will be a press briefing on Tuesday, the 2nd of April, when more information will be shared with you. Let me switch quickly to the Ministry of Health to say that the Ministry of Health welcomed a team of 14 health professionals from the Les Antilles Medical Assistance Team, LAMAT, the team which was a core section of the mission, team who were deployed to the Federation, provided services in dentistry, audiology, and emergency medicine at the Charleston and Brownhill Health Center and the Alexandra Hospital, respectively. We wish to thank the U.S. Embassy and the Taiwan Embassy for working alongside our health professional, professionals and thus contributing to the advancement of global health clear here on the island of Nevis. I want to report members of the press and members of the public that a recently concluded annual prostate screening held by Urology Associates on Saturday, March 16, 2024, saw some 600 men completing the process. And those 600 included 78 who were persons who were doing it for the first time. We continue to encourage our men to take care of their health and take advantage of the health screening offered by the ministry and its partners. In that vein, the general public is invited to take part in the Health and Wellness Fair sponsored by the TDC Group of Companies, the Taiwan ICDF, and the NIA Health Promotion Unit on Friday, April 5th, 2024 at the TDC Longstone Building parking lot in Charlestown. Services available include dental screening, mental health, assessments, HIV testing, weight, BMI, to name a few. And BMI, I think, is body mass index. The event starts at 8 a.m. and will go until 4 p.m. And all are welcome. So this is the 5th of April, and that's a Friday, starting at 8 a.m. and going until 4 p.m. at the Longstone building right in town at the parking lot. The Department of Gender Affairs continues the celebration of International Women's Month. In fact, today, they should have had a Women in Politics panel discussion at the Jessup's Community Center. That starts at 2, starts at the same time as this press conference. So we're hopeful that women from across the island who can make it will be there to hear from our cross-section of our Women in Politics. 
And on Thursday, the 28th of March, they will have an International Women's Award. Uh, six deserving women have been selected to be awarded. Let me move on. The general public is hereby notified, as we have indicated in the past, that there will be a general increase in user fees at public health facilities and the introduction of a new fee structure at some departments in the Ministry of Health, effective April 15th. The increases are a result of significant price increases in medical supplies and equipment and the overall operational costs. Areas affected include Alexandra Hospital, our dental unit, our Registrar General Office Hospital, our Environmental Health and Community Nursing. Members of the public are asked to contact the respective departments for more information on the new fee structures. And let me just say very quickly that amounts charged for our public health or in our public health system are insufficient to cover the cost of providing care at an acceptable level. We recognize that those amounts will never be sufficient if we are to keep care within the reach of our people. And so we feel that health and health care is a public good and the government will have to provide it. What these fee increases are seeking to do is really to see if we could close the gap to some extent while still protecting the vulnerable. And I want to emphasize that, that those who ordinarily would access free treatment because they fall into a vulnerable group such as seniors, they will continue to access that treatment. However, we recognize that charging 20 EC dollars a day for a hospital stay with three meals, a bed, and medication is really not making sense in 2024 Nevis. So we are hopeful that our people will understand. I also use this rostrum to again urge the federal government to move on the issue of national health insurance. Because with national health insurance, we can further bridge the gap between the cost of providing health care and the provision of that health care to our people. And so I just want to emphasize that these increases have become necessary as we try to close that gap, although we understand that health care needs will continue to be heavily subsidized by the taxpayers of the island. The Department of Community Development has asked me to announce that they're having a best-kept village competition. On Wednesday, March 27th, they would have launched this best kept village competition. There are two categories, small and large villages, and this is all part of Culture Armor 50 as well. The competition aims to promote national pride and civic responsibility among our people by encouraging the cleaning and beautifying of small and large villages. Criteria for judging villages will include their cleanliness, garden and landscape appearance, as well as evidence of community spirit. Judging will begin on July 1st. So the various communities and I hope those in St. John's, my constituency, are listening. I want you to get yourselves together, and the judging will begin on July 1st. Now, what I think is interesting is that through this competition, individuals or groups can apply for duty-free concessions with the Ministry of Finance's Culture Mama 50 Island Enhancement Incentive. The Ministry of Social Empowerment will also provide support to registered groups who may need financial support. There will be two winners announced in each of the parishes. Let me shift quickly to public works. Work continues on the reconstruction of the road in Brownhill from the basketball court down to the connection with Low Ground Road. We have relocated utility poles along the roadway, and we are now moving to the installation of concrete curbs. We expect that work then to move forward very quickly. We are currently undertaking works at Butler's Junction. This is the very last bit of work at Butler's, and we anticipate that that will be done also very quickly. On Sunday, the 24th of March, the public works would have milled the entire Marion Avenue roadway, and the new asphalt there was placed on Tuesday of this week, so we have a brand new surface there on Marion Avenue. The Public Works Department Building's team is currently engaged in upgrading the exterior cosmetics of the Ministry of Finance building, this includes masonry work to repair chipped away areas, replacing exterior doors, repainting the exterior, etc. You'll recall that the government has encouraged all of us to step up on the aesthetics of Nevis. 
especially to mark Culture Armor 50 and our homecoming. And to that extent, we have the Culture Armor Enhancement Incentives, which has allowed people to get duty and custom service charge off things like paint, fencing, etc. So the government is also doing its part, and you will see us doing more in and around Charleston and government buildings to ensure that they're painted, that they are improved, and that aesthetically they are far more pleasing than some currently are. We also want to say thank you to Public Works because they played a great part in preparing the Mondo facility for the TDC Inter High Championship, and so we congratulate them. The Water Department continues to do great work. They have completed a project at low ground, which installed 1,500 feet of four-inch pipes. This was done to accommodate livestock farmers in that vicinity and generally to improve the water pressure. Additional work was also ex executed on the Brown Hill Road project. 600 feet of PVC mains were used to replace a 44-inch main in Jones Estate. And there's ongoing work at the Stony Grove project at par approximately 700 feet. This is to facilitate public works as they plan to surface the road. I'm also happy to report that the United Arab, Arab Emirates Solar Desalination Project drilling program at Butler's commenced on Saturday, March 23rd. You would have heard much about this project in the past. I'm proud that as Minister of Foreign Affairs, I negotiated with the government of the UAE two of these desalination plants, one for our sister St. Kitts and one for Nevis. Well, it has taken some time, but we are currently now under the construction, and that will assist us in terms of delivering portable water to our people. On Friday, March 22nd, we discovered a failure on the Fothergill's well pumping unit between the hours of 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. An analysis was done on the site and revealed that the electrical motor inherited what they refer to as a ground fault. The Fothergill's, the Fothergill's well, I want members of the media to understand, is the largest water producing site that feeds the villages and communities in St. George's, St. John's, and St. Paul's, those three parishes. It therefore was a very major event that our main well went down last Friday. That created considerable, considerable difficulty for persons in those three parishes, St. George, St. John, and St. Paul's. And I want to use this podium to apologize sincerely to our people for the inconvenience caused. We know that there's no inconvenience quite as bad as being out of water. And so they were out of water for long periods. In fact, some out of water for as many as two and three days. And so I want to apologize to them sincerely. It was due to a mechanical fault. Thankfully, we had pumps in storage. And so we were able to take out the pump that failed and replace it. But again, I want the public to understand that when you take out a pump, you have to take out all the piping and then replace everything into the well. And so the crew would have worked assiduously, and we were able to complete the repairs on March 25th at around 2 p.m., and we started pumping again from that time. And I am advised that as of, as of today, as I speak to you, all parts of Nevis have been restored. But we also experience a failure of another pump, a smaller pump at Padlock, on the same day of the failure in Fothergills. So it's like, you know, when things go wrong, they go terribly wrong. We have not yet replaced that one, but we hope to do so sometime today. That is the smaller pump and the smaller well at Padlock. That's in Fothergills. No, I'm sorry. The same day, forgive me, as the failure in Fothergills, we had this failure um, at the Padlock area as well. So we had some difficulties, but thank God through the hard work of the team. And I want to commend Minister Brand because he spent quite a bit of time on site encouraging the men and women at the Water Department to do what was necessary to restore water. So I thank them for that. I want to report that the Nevis Water Department con conducted a disconnection of customers who were in arrears three months and over in March. To date, the Nevis Water Department has seen over 250 customers affected. 
with a total of 74 reconnections. Customers are again advised that if your balance is over three months, you are subject to disconnection. And we intend to continue with this exercise every month. We continue to encourage customers, please, rather than allowing your water to be disconnected and having inconvenience and then having to pay a reconnection fee, please go into the water department and come to some arrangement where you can pay something and keep your water on. Do not wait until the water is disconnected to call my phone and to call other ministers and start to ask about, oh, can I get the water turned back on because it's in an, an inconvenience. Please go in if you know you're in arrears and speak to the people at the water department. We are not interested in cutting off consumers. We're interested in collecting from you for the service so that we can keep the service going. So if you owe $1,000 and you don't have the $1,000 to pay, go in and talk to them. They may tell you pay 100 and then come back with a plan to pay the rest. But go in and speak to them. Do not ignore your water bill. And then when you get cut off, you start to call. Do what you're supposed to do and be responsible. Some of us have children in the home. We have elderly persons in the home. We need water. Water is life. And so I'm begging, I'm urging, I'm beseeching our customers, please be responsible and do what is right. There's no reason why some 250 customers should be affected. And remember, only those who owe three months and over. So we're not like the private companies, the telecoms companies and things. When you owe one month, you're cut. You pick up your phone and there's no signal. You switch on your TV and the cable is gone because you haven't paid. We have given you a grace period of three months. And still, some people are not paying and refusing to go in to come to an arrangement. So I'm asking you, please, to do what is right. I have to pay. I'm sure members of the media here have to pay. And all of us have to pay. And we have maintained rates that are affordable for such a critical resource as water. Compare our rates to some of our neighbors and you realize how affordable water is here in the island of Nevis. So we ask you, please, to do the right thing. I want to announce that consistent with our commitment to explore for additional water, that we have awarded through a bidding process a contract to Water and Oil Services Company Limited in Trinidad. They were selected as a contractor to carry out drilling exercise in Nevis to explore for new sources of water to augment the current supply. They're currently making the necessary preparations for mobilization of the drilling equipment and technical personnel to Nevis. And so uh, we look forward to working with them and to bring in additional water on stream in short order. In terms of agriculture, we're excited to thank the various patrons and overall response to the 2024 edition of Agri Expo. Thank you to our patron, Mrs. Valerie Ehrman Hendrickson, and a special thank you to our visitors who came from Stacia Saber and our brothers and sisters came over in large numbers from St. Kitts. We had a very successful event and much gratitude to the members of staff who continue to do an outstanding job. Stay tuned as our next series of activities will be Agriculture Awareness Month in May and the Fruit Festival in August. Incidentally, and I hope that it didn't cause too much controversy, but there was a marijuana tent this year at the Agri Expo. A closed tent, which children were not admitted to. So it was only for adults. And uh, the idea really was to show what is happening in terms of cannabis, to show how it's grown, to teach and give some information to the general public. I was able to go in myself and have a look. I was quite impressed with the knowledge of those who were there sharing. And also, I was impressed with the wide cross-section of the society who were there. In fact, one elderly lady told me I should get some because it's good for tea. Um, and so it 
really reinforces in my mind that the days of criminalizing and ostracizing cannabis are arguably now behind us. I think the world has moved on. And I feel that Sinkitz and Nevis has been really playing around the edges for some time about cannabis. Playing around the edges, we keep tweaking, we keep changing this little thing one year, changing this little thing the next year. I think we just need to take a bold step. We had the tent there. It was probably one of the most visited tents. And I have not heard that anybody suffered any adverse consequences from having it there. So we just really need to accept that the world has moved past perhaps some of the views and some of the restrictions that currently exist. And there's certainly a demand for cannabis, especially for medicinal and research purposes. And so I say kudos to our officials. They were bold enough to take this step. And the police didn't lock up any of us, so I'm thankful that things went well. And I say kudos to all who made the AgriFest such a tremendous success. Let me switch to Culturama. I am very, very pleased at how plans are progressing for the stage in our 50th anniversary of Culturama and our homecoming celebration from July 25th to August 6th. Only yesterday, the marketing committee launched a new mobile app. It's called the Nevis Culturama mobile app. And the app is designed to provide individuals at home and in the diaspora. And in fact, all other persons have been showing a keen interest in witnessing Culturama 50 and Nevis with all the information they need about Culturama 50 in one place. So download the app, the Nevis Culturama mobile app, and get up to the minute, up to date information. We're encouraging you to do that. They say Android and iPhone users can download the app from Google Play <coughs> and Apple Store today, forgive me. And you'll have Culture Armor 50 with you wherever you go. This past Thursday, March 21st, the senior pageant contestants and participants signed contracts with the Nevis Culture Armor Committee, thus cementing their participation in Miss Culture Queen pageant the Miss Culture Swimmer pageant and Mr. Cool contest. There will be six contestants vying for Miss Culture Queen, five vying for Miss Culture Swimsuit, and five competing for the Mr. Cool title. The Miss Culture Queen pageant winner will receive $20,000 cash and a scholarship to pursue a bachelor's degree at Monroe College through a partnership with Monroe College. And the Swimmer and Mr. Cool winners will receive cash prize of $12,000 each. This coming Sunday, I'm quite excited about this, on March 31st, we will see the first in a series of Pan Yard Concerts. They're called Pan Yard Concerts at the Malcolm Gishad Recreational Park from 4 to 7 p.m. The initiative is being spearheaded by the Music Department of the Nevis Cultural Development Foundation. This Sunday's concert will feature performances by Community Development Steel Orchestra, Wally Rhythms, Point Siena Rhythms, and guest performance, uh, performances by EBJ Harmonics from St. Kitts. There will also be a cultural performance and special guest performance by Speedy, who will be backed by a steel orchestra. It promises to be a relaxing Easter Sunday afternoon at MGR Park, so we invite all divisions and kitchens alike to attend the MGR Park this Sunday afternoon for the first Panyard concert series starting at 4 p.m. On Saturday... February 24th, go, I don't know how to pronounce this, go live, go live, go live. Well, this is division. Go live. G-U-H, go live, was launched. This live online interactive virtual series hosted by the Nevis Culture Armor Committee seeks to provide information to the general public through interviews with various committee members and participants in this year's festival. It also provides a platform for soca artists, calypsonians, and bands to release and promote their offerings for Culture Armor 50. Now, members of the press, I'm happy to report that after considerable preparatory work, that our repairs, renovations, and upgrades at the Cultural Village and Culture Armor Complex have started. Ten contractors plus the Public Works Department will undertake the repairs and upgrades to the venues in preparation for Culture Armor 50. And if you're asking why so many contractors, 
we have given each of them an assigned task and asked them to get it done as quickly as possible. The work at the cultural complex will see a significant upgrade to the interior of concession stalls. Each store would experience an upgrade in electrical system, new hand washing and washing up sinks, an entirely new roof raising the flow of some boots, which often get flooded by water running from the roads and into the boots. The work of the cultural village would involve constructing five corporate boxes, two on the cultural complex side and three on the E.T. Willett Park side. They will be rented to corporate companies over the cultural armor period. Additionally, the performance stage area would be increased by removing the dressing rooms at the back of the existing stage and relocating them into the cultural complex. Please note that the area for patrons will not be affected in the cultural village. We are going back, not forward. New bathrooms will also be constructed to cater to the anticipated large crowds expected at the facility during Culture Armor 50. I also want to advise that we will be reconstructing the wall that divides the Culture Armor Village from the ETW Park, and we'll be taking in a few feet on the ETW Park side, which doesn't impact the park itself, because you'll recall at the top, it is really just a cliff area that some use for some parking. So we will be taking in a few feet to allow us to do the bathrooms more comfortably on the inside of the Culture Armor Village. The Culture Armor 50 Jingle Competition saw 10 submissions. Judging to select the winning entry will be done this week, and the winner will be announced shortly thereafter. Just a reminder that registrations are still open for the Junior and Senior Kaiso Contest, the Groovy and Power Soaker Monarch Contest, the Mr. and Miss Talented Youth Pageant, Road March, Juve Troops, Junior and Senior Parades, Art, Craft, and Cultural Food Fair, and Street Vending. Now, those of you over the years who have been involved in street vending may ask, why are registrations open? Well, we're encouraging persons wishing to be engaged in street vending for Culture Armor 50 to register with the Culture Armor Secretariat. This is a big policy shift. This will allow the Secretariat to properly organize the street vending for Culture Armor 50, where spots will be allocated to the vendors instead of what happened in the past when vendors would haphazardly set up in any available spot. This haphazard arrangement has proven risky, especially when the trailers with bands and other vehicles pass through the streets. This year, the Culture Armor Committee will work closely with the Traffic Department to allocate safe vending areas throughout Charlestown. Now, I want for those of us who might be listening from our sisters and kids to also pay attention because we have quite a few vendors who come from St. Kitts for Culture Armor and who vend in Nevis. Please, all are asked to apply to the Culture Armor Secretariat so that you get your spot allocated to you. I recall there was some confusion last Culture Armor where some argued that people were trespassing on their spots. So we want this year to be clear. Punsi, spot one. Brantley, spot two. Daniel, spot three. So that there's no confusion and that the traffic and Culture Armor Secretariat and everybody can ensure the safety of our people and our revelers. Good news as well, that we will shortly be launching our online ticketing sales. For those especially coming from overseas, they have asked, can we buy tickets online? The answer is yes. We'll be launching that shortly. And we anticipate that you will be definitely able to get your tickets in short order. That will be rolled out very soon and you'll get more announcements as we get closer to that. We're also pleased to announce that the shows for Culture Armor 50 will be streamed pay-per-view. They will be streamed pay-per-view. So I don't want anybody calling me and make noise about free streaming. There will be a nominal fee, but you'll have to pay to view. Let me shift to tourism. I want to congratulate my cousin, Kashma Evelyn. She's been named culinary ambassador for Nevis. She was the official host of A Taste of Nevis season one, focused on the culinary scene in Nevis. She was born and raised in St. Kitts and Nevis, but in 2021, she started her own company, Food for Cash. She has partnered with major brands such as Walmart, Wendy's, Papa John's, Ting Soda, England's Best, among others to create content and promote their products across the social media platform. So we congratulate Ambassador Kashmir Evelyn as our culinary ambassador for Nevis. 
I'm also pleased that, of course, on Friday, March 15th, Winnie resumed services directly between St. Martin and Nevis after I an hiatus of almost five years. I believe it's an important development. They're using a twin auto 19-seater aircraft. And the schedule is to leave St. Martin around 6 p.m. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, leave Nevis 8 a.m. the following day. It allows the visions to go down to St. Martin early Saturday morning. It allows those in St. Martin to come home or come to visit Friday evening, stay for the weekend, back at work in time for Monday. And so those who want to go to St. Martin to shop or visit loved ones, you can go early Saturday morning, come back Sunday night. Those who want to come from St. Martin to spend the weekend or visit loved ones can come down Friday night and go back Monday morning. So we have all these options now available to us. In addition, as we know, Winnie has various interline arrangements with various major airlines and so can connect you seamlessly with Air France with KLM Air France out of St. Martin goes to Charles de Gaulle Airport in Paris, France, and KLM goes to, uh, what is that airport called now? The airport in Amsterdam, um, Schiphol, I think it is called. So it goes to Schiphol directly. So if you want to go to Europe now direct, you can definitely go that. In fact, even people who are going to England can fly to Paris and then take the train over the channel to England, or under the channel, I should say. To England. So the truth is that it opens up a whole new world. They also have regular flights from St. Martin to Canada, Air Transat, um, Air Canada, uh, WestJet. They all fly into St. Martin. I think that's a great opportunity to connect with them. And then you have JetBlue and American Airlines and United Airlines and all of those that also offer service from St. Martin. In terms of Caribbean connectivity, it's also great because it connects you same morning to St. Bart's. It connects you to Saba, Stacia, where we know we have lots of divisions living. It also connects you to other parts, such as Antigua, the BVI. And then, for those who are going to places like Trinidad and Jamaica, they also have opportunities there. So we think that it's a great opportunity to add to connectivity, and it is part and parcel of our overall effort to expand our airport, not only in terms of the physical infrastructure, but also in terms of the flights and services available there. I'm asking you to watch this space because we hope that we'll have some more announcements to make in short order. Now of note to the traveling public is that in collaboration with the government, Winnie has announced an introductory fare of US $115 plus tax one way. So 115 US dollars plus tax one way, that is an introductory fare. And that fee will be available from March 15th to June 15th. So all of you in St. Martin wanting to come home for Culturama Book Now, all of you in the States and elsewhere who want to connect through St. Martin Book Now, the service is available, and we look forward, certainly, to that service. The Ministry of Tourism, we would have conducted two training activities during March. The first of these was a community tourism exercise for St. Thomas's Parish. That was facilitated by our friend, Leonard Stapleton, and participants were exposed to extensive interactive lessons on local history, culture, and also we learned how to curate informative and engaging tours in the St. Thomas's area. This is part of our push for more community-based tourism. We also hosted a hospitality two-day, two, I'm sorry, one-day hospitality training seminars hosted by hospitality facilitator Noah Mills, Dr. St. Kitts, and those two training workshops, Minish was able to impact approximately 82 persons across various business sectors on the island. So we continue our mandate to educate, to engage, and certainly to hone the skills of our people in terms of hospitality. The Ministry of Tourism also wishes to announce that over the period 8 to 12 April, we'll be hosting a fabric art workshop facilitated by Ms. Deborah Tyrrell, at the Nevis International Secondary School. That's right there in Brown Pasture. It's a great opportunity for entrepreneurs and individuals engaged in the creative industries. Spaces are limited, so please contact the Ministry of Tourism to register. Let me take a moment to congratulate our own Shabana Prince. Shabana is to be honored at the CTO Sustainable Tourism Conference to be held in Grenada in April. 
Shabena is the owner of a local healthcare product line, which she calls Native Radiance. And she won the accolade of honorable mention at the Caribbean Tourism Organization Regional Tourism Health and Safety Awards. Ms. Prince has been invited to receive her award at the CTO's Biennial Sustainable Tourism Conference slated for Grenada. And so we congratulate Shabena. She's doing great work. And we say kudos to her. We continue to advertise our Culture Armor 50 Homestay Program. Ministry of Tourism in collaboration with the NTA and the Culture Armor Secretariat. We continue to invite persons who have additional rooms in their houses, villas, guest houses, apartments to participate in the homestay program. We are pleased that over two dozen properties have already signed up for the program. Please call 469-0051 or 469-7550 for additional details on how to sign up. Some of the aims is to provide alternative and affordable accommodation to persons provide an enriching authentic division experience that will bring economic benefits to our locals, assist in attainable sustainable tourism, and the promotion of tourism within rural communities, and spread the tourism spending across the island of Nevis. Restaurant Week this year has been announced. It will be from the 11th of July to the 21st. And guess what? The ingredient this year is papaya. Pupai, as we say. Papa for those, or papaya. I've never heard papaya when I was young. It was a papaya. But anyway, we all know what it is, and that will be the ingredient. So that will certainly test your creative juices. I don't know anything to do with papaya other than to eat it when it's ripe or put it in soup or something when it's green. But I guess we'll find out. And then I'm actually to save the date for Exposition Nevis 2024. Nevis will celebrate its Tourism Awareness Month dubbed exhibition, ex Exposition Nevis from April 29th to May 31st. One of our highlights will be the Nevis Beer and Grill Festival sponsored by Carrie Brewery. And that Beer and Grill Festival will happen on Saturday 25th May at the MGR Park. So we have a lot, a lot that's happening. Now, let me just quickly make reference to something that has happened. and something that I think is huge exposure for the island of Nevis. And that is we had a recent visit by a woman called Jenna Bush Hagar. Now, Jenna Bush Hagar, Mrs. Hagar, is the daughter of former U.S. President George Bush. Let me call him George Bush Senior, Junior, and the granddaughter of former U.S. President George Bush Senior. And she came here with her family for a break. Now what is instructive is that she is a co-host of a show called The Today Show, which I'm told is viewed by over 1.5 million households in America each day. And she went back and she gushed about Nevis. In fact, she posted on her Instagram page that caters to over 1.4 million followers. She said, my body is in New York City, but my heart is in Nevis. She gave very high commendations, and I want to join in those commendations to the management and staff of our Four Seasons Resort, which continues to be the flagship for luxury, not only in St. Kitts and Nevis, but in the, country, in the region, in the Caribbean. And uh, she gave high kudos and high marks. Now, I want people to understand that Nevis did not pay for asked for or was in any way involved in this tremendous piece of public relations that we would have got. This was a guest who used her platforms to say that we are a very special place. You'll recall some time ago that we had an American actress, Nia Long, and she came and her comment will always tell me, she says, my heart belongs to Nevis. And the reaction of some was to bash Miss Long, because how dare anyone say anything good about this island that we all claim we love. But I thank Miss Nia Long for her comments then. And here it is now, Mrs. Hagar, Bush Hagar, the daughter and granddaughter of two presidents of the United States, coming and to say 
My body is in New York City, but my heart is in Nevis. Maybe she read what Nia wrote. I don't know. But I am delighted that she came and that she shared her experience of the island on the Today Show, which is widely watched. So whereas we have had promotions in the past where we try to give away trips, we do all of these things to attract attention. This is organic. This is natural. This is uh, not manufactured or arranged. This is somebody who came and was so impressed that they went back and thought it best to share that. Let me also share with you some excellent news that we had a visit over the period March 6th to 10th of a company called Shake Productions, S-H-A-K-E. And Shake Productions would have come with a producer, Ms. Daniel Manthe, and 17 production staff and models, all of whom stayed at our Mount Nevis Hotel. They used many local services, including our own photographer, Ryan Maynard Refik. We had Kevin Wilkin, who acted as location scout, as well, of course, as we had drivers, tent renters, a seamstress, wardrobe assistant, to name a few. Now, you're asked what they were doing here. They were doing a photo shoot for a catalog for a brand, clothing brand called Madewell. M-A-D-E-W-E-L-L. -E -E -L. Madewell, we are told, is a sister brand to J. Crew. And so we are very happy to have them. I'm told it is the second major shoot that Sheik has brought to Nevis. They came before and they did a major shoot here for, I think, Land's End, uh, which is another clothing line. And so I want to commend them for choosing Nevis. I've been in touch with their producer to say that Nevis is open as we continue to push on film and fashion as another segment to what we offer. These are very, very good indicators that our messaging is getting out. And I want to certainly commend all who are involved in making this a reality and bringing this to our shows. And we look forward to more fashion shoots, being on the cover of the major fashion magazine, the covers of major, major fa fashion magazines around the world, and certainly for engaging more with organizations like Sheik to bring these types of events here to the island of Nevis. That is what we're seeking to do through our film commission and our film commissioner to promote photo shoots, fashion, to promote music videos, to promote commercials, television series, films, all forms. We think that this is something that is a good way for us to continue to push the idea of the film industry and the idea of the orange or creative economy. Thank you, and if you have any questions, I'd be delighted to take those. Good afternoon, Premier Brantley, Donella Thompson, Bond Radio. Good afternoon. Uh, following the altercation that would have taken place at the Inter High School Championship on Nevis, will the ministry have any, that's the Ministry of Education et al., Will the ministry have any new protocols in place to prevent such incidents at the inter-primary school championship or any post-disciplinary measures such as escorting persons off the ground? And also, are you at liberty to give any current status on that incident? Two, can an update be provided on the geothermal project? And three, can an update be provided on the broiler facility project? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much um, for your questions. Um, there was an altercation, and let's face it. Wherever we have large crowds that are gathered, there is always a risk of people behaving badly, segments of that crowd behaving badly. And so I don't condone, nor do I excuse the behavior of persons who were involved in that altercation. I've heard various versions of why it happened, but it should not have happened. I'm happy, however, that nobody was seriously injured in any way. And uh, you ask what happened based on what I'm told, the security uh, would have responded quickly and would have diffused the situation, including escorting persons out of the venue and dealing with them as appropriate. You ask what will be put in place to prevent 
If I could tell you that, then I would have the answer to prevent all bad behavior by humans. But I can't tell you because no matter what you put in place, there's always the risk of some altercation between persons who decide to bring their bad behavior to a public event. And so all I can tell you is that we will have adequate security. We have been having the inter-primary championship now for 30 years, so we have experience with it. So we're going to have adequate security, private security, and our police on site. We are going to ensure that we provide as much security as possible. But we're asking our people to conduct themselves responsibly and sensibly so as to avoid any fights or any altercation or anybody being injured. The idea is for children, it's a kid-friendly or child-friendly event, or inter-primary inter sports, and we are really optimistic, Ms. Thompson, that people will behave themselves properly. The truth is we have not traditionally had problems at that venue. We have not traditionally had problems. And so this was an aberration that we had an issue there, and we're hopeful that that doesn't continue. Geothermal, I don't have any fresh news. We're still in the bidding process um, because you would recall that I'd reported that the first round of bidding was not successful. So we had to go back. We had to um, redesign the bid documents, working with, between Nevelick and the CDB. And so now we're still in that process. I'm optimistic that I'll have a report for you very soon, but I do not yet have that today. On the broiler facility, we are at the stage now having identified the site that we are seeking uh, bids in relation to the construction of the facility itself. Um, I will tell you that we had some initial bids and the amounts were, how should I put it, um, beyond what we had anticipated. Let me put it, let me use that language. So we have gone back to the drawing board in a way to have a second look at the facility to determine since we are starting the industry do we need a facility that is designed the way this one was designed, which is a facility that's designed for a sort of well-established, long-running, profitable undertaking. So the design had all the bells and whistles that one could imagine. We are hopeful that if we could take out some bells and some whistles, that we could get a project going that could endure. But our ambition is still to proceed with that project this year. That was always the ambition, and so we hope that we'll be able to do that. In relation to the lands to be purchased, I think I'd mentioned that, that we'll be purchasing some lands. We had some delays there because there were some issues as to the actual amount of land, but we're hopeful now to be at a position where we can settle that and start allocating those lands to individual farmers. That was part of the plan, if you recall, that our model is to have individual farmers farming the birds and then bringing them to a government-run facility for processing. So we're still on that vein and I will have more information to you as and when we have a quote on the facility that we can manage financially and get us to a point where we can start the industry. We could always have room for growth and expansion later, but we want to be able to start and to start this year. So thanks for that question. Good afternoon, Elke Hewlett, Department of Information. Uh, Mr. Brantley, the Lamat team that was here, we had uh, Dr. Chan, the dentist, Lieutenant Colonel Foster, who was the audiologist, and Dr. Maynard, who dealt with emergency care. And one thing that was steady throughout when we spoke to them would have been that they were so impressed with the level of health care in Nevis, especially the health care professionals that they would have encountered. And they said they learned a lot. It was indeed an exchange of ideas um, with transfer of knowledge because they learned about things they had never experienced in their practice in the U.S., things like um, centipede bites and different <laughs> things and, you know, some diabetes um, issues and stuff that they had not seen, dealt with before. So what, on that note, what is your thought? What are your thoughts on the provision of health care in Nevis? Um, the water taxi reception facility, what impact do you think that will have on travel through that port? Um, do we have a timeline for the water drilling? And what is the government doing to address the need for the demand, actually, for housing? And I think that that's it for now. Okay, Ms. Hewlett, thank you. And I'm happy that the reports from the LAMAT group were positive. Um, I've always said that our healthcare system has been unfairly attacked. That it has, it has been 
you know, we've had a situation where many people have used it as a, as a sort of political thing. I remember listening to one political commentator from the NRP who went on radio to say that the Alexandra Hospital is where people went to die. I thought that was terribly, terribly unfortunate because the truth be told, that that is an institution that has served all of us. And if God forbid any of us were to fall down right now, I'm not feeling so well myself. So any of us were to fall down, that's our first port of call. And I feel that we do a disservice to the hardworking men and women there and the hardworking professionals when we seek to denigrate them in this way. And over and over, we keep getting groups that come in who comment favorably on what it is we're doing. At Alexandria Hospital and within our healthcare system in Nevis, we've not only just upgraded in terms of the skill sets available, the number of specialists that are available, the number of doctors that are available, we've also upgraded in terms of equipment, state-of-the-art sonogram, mammogram, CT scan. So we have done, I believe, an excellent job in ensuring that we have a good cadre of professionals offering excellent care. Is it perfect? No. But point me to a healthcare system anywhere in the world that is perfect. Even in the great United Kingdom, they're talking about long waiting times for the NHS, people not being able to access the care they need. We see all around the world difficulties in terms of healthcare. In the United States, they still can't solve the healthcare problem. You had Obamacare pass, and you have that being a political football back and forth. This government has quietly gone about its business improving the healthcare services. We continue to encourage our young people interested in nursing because we're providing scholarships for you to go and study nursing in St. Kitts. Please get involved. We continue to encourage our doctors who want to specialize that the government will partner with you to get involved. In fact, I believe it was last month's press conference I reported that two of our young doctors have been able to obtain scholarships from Cuba. Want to specialize, I believe it was in uh, is it radiology, and the other, I think, was an OBGYN. And we have another young doctor who's there now doing, uh, what do you call it, uh, ophthalmology. Um, the words sometimes uh, are not always with me, but certainly we have another young doctor who's there as well. So the truth is that opportunities are there. And those who are interested, we're asking to step up and step forward because like food and water and electricity, people need health care. But we have been providing health care at an acceptable standard for a small developing island like ours. And I don't join anybody in attacking our health care sector. Yes, there will be times when perhaps the service is not what you would think, but I think on balance, I've had so many glowing reports of what is available here on the island of Nevis. The water taxi facility is opening tomorrow. It is the next iteration of that facility. It represents a significant investment by the government of Nevis over the years in developing a pier and then developing now this reception area. It will house security, it will house the ticket boots, it will have a, a very we hope comfortable um, sitting area for those who are traveling back and forth. And so as of tomorrow, my understanding is that the general public will be able to use that building that is there. And we expect that it will come and continue to be a major entry way for the island of Nevis. While we are looking forward to extending our airport facility, we anticipate that that facility is still going to be critical insofar as an entry point into Nevis, because we anticipate that even with a refurbished Vance Armour International Airport, the, the, the large body jets are still going to come into RLB. So the British Airways, et cetera, are still going to come in there, and so we anticipate that that is still going to be a significant portal. I want to say to the public that we are not done yet. Now, if I had my wish, we would have delayed the opening, because I wanted the landscaping and everything to be in. But I was overruled by everyone else who said, no, man, the building is what's most important. It's done. Let's move forward. And so you're going to see some other things being done in terms of the landscaping and just generally lifting that area. We want 
that experience when you come to Nevis to be an excellent first look at the island of Nevis. And so we certainly look forward to that. And let us not forget, Ms. Hewlett, that our investment over at Wally is not by chance. It is part of a plan. And if you ask, well, what is the plan? The plan really was to create something to support the water taxi industry. And I call it an industry because I believe right now it is performing at a particular level. Where initially, if you recall, the water taxi, when we contemplated, we thought that the water taxi would be used by a few people because the majority of people, we assumed, would still use the ferry in town. But it has turned out that the water taxi is commonly used by everybody. And it has not diminished Charlestown. What has happened really is that more people are traveling. And there are more opportunities for people to travel. And one of the things that I marvel at in terms of our water taxi is that it is still 100% division owned and operated. And I think that's insignificant. Because it shows the Nevis government saying, here we have something that is 100% division owned and operated. Let's support it. And it provides a critical service now. Everybody uses this service. And so we are hopeful, as I keep asking on the Reggae Beach side on St. Kitts, that that facility be improved. And we anticipate in due course that we'll have a similar facility over there as we have over here. Water drilling timeline, I'm not sure what you mean with timeline. We're expecting that they're going to mobilize soon. We're just signing the contracts now. We have to pay them the mobilization amount, which we're going to deal with, we hope, in the coming week. And then we expect that they're going to mobilize as quickly thereafter as possible. We told them we wanted them to mobilize already because we want this drilling to start right away. So we anticipate having them drilling and having the desal plant construction all happening at the same time. The idea being, in fact, they've suggested that we can do three wells, and the idea was that we should have at least the first well in production by Culturama. That is the ambition. I'm hoping that we can get there. Housing, we understand the demand for housing. We also understand that the government of Nevis cannot satisfy that demand. So I'm not even going to sugarcoat it or pretend the government of Nevis cannot satisfy that demand in large measure because the government of Nevis doesn't have the land stock. Unlike our brothers in Sinkits, the federal government is the largest landowner on the island of Sinkits. Because Nevis got out of sugar a long time ago, Nevis government doesn't own lands like the Sinkits government, Sinkits Nevis government owns the sugar lands. And so we do not have the luxury of just opening up new developments on Nevis. Where we have lands, we've tried our best, such as Madden's, but we understand that our land stock is finite. So we continue to invite the private sector. If, as we have seen, the demand is what you say it is, and I agree with you, then we're asking the private sector to step up. There is no private sector developer currently who is doing affordable housing, who is doing housing for the sort of middle-income household who's offering a turnkey project. The only one that I think tried was a development up there in the church ground area. I can't remember the name now. But they had a development there. But I think that the price point there was such that some people was a little above the range for some. But if somebody out there can come to the government with a proposal, to provide concessions because they have a piece of land, they have the expertise where they can offer homes within that, what I would call 150,000 US, I'm sorry, what am I saying? 100,000 US to 150,000 US range. That is 270,000 EC to 400,000 EC range. I believe that there is a tremendous demand for that because that is not too far outside the range that the Nevis Housing and Land Development Corporation is doing homes for. But the government cannot do it alone. So we're calling on the private sector. TDC, if you're listening, we know you have plenty of land in Nevis. Come do a project in Nevis. 
it is important that that happens. My good friend there, the, the um, chairman, is he chairman now of TDC? Mr. Kelly? Nevis man. Mr. Ernie France. Big man in Nevis. A Nevis man. Well, you all do something in Nevis now. You look at Sinkage, you look at the number of projects that TDC has done. I'm not that I'm picking on them, but TDC is a big company. And they are a national entity. TDC group is spread across the Federation. When you look at Sinkits, I could think of Half Moon, that project over there, what they call Sunrise, I think. I can think of a project there on the Bayfront, close to Port Zante. I could think of the developments in town. I could think of Duas Estate. I can think of Leeward Cove Condominium. What do you mean? You could do all that over in Sinkits. Well, Nevis people need housing too. So TDC, I'm calling you out. Come over and see us and partner with us. Can't have Tony Vision at the helm of a national company and I do not know Nevis. Come talk to us. Yes, I'm saying it publicly because I think that is how the country needs to function. Hosfords, come talk to us. And let some of that development come over here because our people are crying out for housing. And some of these companies own significant lands. They have access to lumber and all that you need for building. They own the cement company. So all that you need for construction, they have land, lumber and building materials, cement. They sell steel too. So you have everything. All you need is the will. And the government is willing to partner with you. I hope these divisions are not going to let me down. Lord, it must be after your tenure you can say, point to something in Nevis that you did. I'm hopeful. It can't be just sometimes about just profit. It also has to be about ensuring that there's development in the country. And we have 13 and a half, 14,000 people over here. We have people in the tourism sector, people in the banking sector, middle management within the public service. And people are all asking, a lot of divisions have a piece of land already. But the hassle of building sometimes to get the plans and to deal with planning and get the architects and Higher contractor, higher plumber, higher, they would prefer a turnkey. When you tell them, listen, choose your house, and that is why the government housing has been so popular. Because once they choose the house, the only thing they have to do is always pay for it. Because the government then takes care of the contractor and all the painting and everything else. So, yes, there is room. And I've publicly called out some of the big companies to tell them, to do something in Nevis for a change. I think that Nevis deserves it, and our economy is at a stage now where our people can sustain it. So I call on them. I hope the message gets to them. I also believe that we have tried to encourage individuals to build their own homes through the first time homeowners program, etc. So while we understand that it is sometimes a little difficult, a lot of us, even in this room, have built homes before, so we understand. But we have tried to incentivize, particularly home, first-time homeowners, through some concessions that are available. So we continue to try every avenue. But please, when you write the article, get the message out to TDC in particular that Nevis needs some home construction. And I'm calling them out. Yes, Mr. Bart. Good afternoon, Premier. Glenn yeah, Bart, yeah. SK Newsline. Uh, yesterday in the National Assembly sitting, um, the Prime Minister made a statement in regards to the um, citizenship by investment um, program, um, new changes that are going to be coming in regards to, for example, the citizenship by investment unit becoming a possibly a statutory corporation, etc. In the context of you being a former Minister of Foreign Affairs, what is your opinion or what is your viewpoint in regards to these changes? Do you believe that they would appease the European countries, particularly those Schengen countries of Europe, 
with regards to the visa-free access situation. Um, secondly, um, CARICOM free movement. You have made some comments with regards to the risk to small states um, of the Caribbean community. Now, as Premier, what direction do you believe the federal government could take in regards to a protected approach um, on this matter, given that Sinkis and Nevis believes in the overall concept of regional integration? Um, three, in relation to the marijuana industry, uh, are there external factors at play in the, perhaps the inhibition of the progress of the marijuana industry here in St. Kitts and Nevis? Um, some believe that um, there are certain regulations or rules or international laws that might be um, preventing us from moving faster. And uh, lastly, for the time being, <coughs> In regards to Winnie, was the Nevis Island administration required to provide a um, uh, financial or revenue guarantee, I think this is called, um, for the airline to provide the service to Nevis? All right, thank you. Okay, I start with your last question first. In terms of Winnie, the answer is yes. We did provide a revenue guarantee to Winnie, um, but that is standard, even into RLB. The federal government provides MRGs to American Airlines and the other airlines that serve the jurisdiction. What I want our public to understand, however, is that if we use the service, then there's no call on that MRG. What I mean by that is once the planes are flying with the requisite number of people back and forth, then you don't have a difficulty in terms of ever calling. In Sinkits, for example, I know that American, I don't believe, has ever had to call on the federal government for support under that MRG. So we, it's like a, a backstop to the airline to protect the airline. But the way that we assist is for us to use the service. And so I encourage our people to use the service. That's why they left in the first place. People are not using the service. We, we exist, Mr. Bart, in a strange place sometimes because I get bashed every day that the airport dead, nothing happened at the airport. Since I have been in government, we brought silver airways here. They used to be called something before they were silver. Huh? Seaborne. Seaborne, actually, people forget. Seaborne came to Nevis first. It is only after Seaborne started to come to Nevis that they then decided, some weeks later, that they would also fly to St. Kitts. But Nevis was the entry point for Seaborne. We had trade with aviation that we brought. We had air sunshine that we brought. We had those three airlines that were new to Nevis, so to speak, that were flying. Air sunshine, well, that had some difficulties. I think the main pilot and the owner passed away, and so they didn't continue with that company. But certainly, trade wind pulled out, lack of customers. Seaborne pulled out of Nevis and they're not only operating out of Sinkits. When you pull out of Nevis, same complaint, lack of customers. So you get bashed, you go out, you bring airlines, and then people don't use the service. And so when we said to, for example, Seaborne, now Silver, could you continue with the service? The government will pay. And they said, even if the government is paying, it is not feasible for them because they could put the equipment elsewhere and make. So nobody wants to fly an empty plane, essentially. And that's what was happening. So we can't, as a public, demand traffic when we then refuse to use the traffic. I give the, I give the joke all the time that I was on Seaborne coming from Puerto Rico, and I'm busy counting the people in the plane who I know are going Nevis, right? Busy counting, and I got to, I think it was 12, and I said, okay, because I know the cutoff point was Seaborne was 10. If you get 10 or over, you don't, you don't have to pay anything, meaning the government. So I got to 12, and Seaborne used to land in Sinkits from Puerto Rico, and then take off in Sinkits and come to Nevis, where the pilots would spend the night, the plane would be there, and then they leave early the next morning. And when I got to Sinkits and landed, this lady and her three children got up to get off in Sinkits. 
So I cried out. I said, no, we don't reach Davis yet. She says, okay, I'm coming off down here. So that 12 became 8, and the government in Nevis had to pay. But four divisions got off in sink kits. And people give you all kinds of reasons. Oh, customs in sink kits easier. Customs now rummage up the bag like in Nevis. Oh, they get through easier down there. Some argue that the flight is a little cheaper. In fact, the Winnier pricing, we said to Winnier, we don't want a penny more than is being charged at RLB. We don't want people to have the excuse to say, I'm going sink it because it's cheaper. And in fact, it's really not. Because when you add the cost of your water taxi, you add your cost of your taxi, you add your departure taxes, it's really not. And then the convenience of getting in your car. I went away last week, Friday afternoon, just for the day, Saturday. So left Friday evening, came back Sunday morning. And I actually had forgotten how good it felt to just drive over, park your car at the airport, jump on a plane, go where you're going, come back, pick up your car, go about your business. You know, I had forgotten because we have grown so accustomed to coming into RLB, getting a taxi, going to the water taxi, getting something from there. So I just want our people to say, listen, we can use the service. There is enough traffic, we can use the service. And I'm hopeful that the hotels and all of those also use the service. So that's critical for us. Um, marijuana industry, you say, uh, why the hesitance? <clears throat> you know, there used to be this saying that the earth was flat. And as you sail too far, you'll fall off the edge of the earth. And that's why they claim that people like Christopher Columbus were so bold. Some said they were crazy. Because Columbus, so the history books say, had the theory that if he went west, he will end up east. Because the world is not flat, but round. And that is why they claim he discovered the West Indies, so they say. I say that to say this. Sometimes our greatest fear is in our own heads. All the evidence, Mr. Bart, points to a cannabis industry doing well. All the evidence. In fact, just, I believe it was three weeks ago, I had a meeting in my office with some people who were very interested in being involved in the cannabis industry here in the Federation. And they spent some time laying out for me the windfall that some states like Colorado and others in America have got. In America, you have all these states that have legalized, decriminal, whatever language you want to use. But marijuana is available, cannabis is available. I was in Miami some several months ago. And there's an area called Lincoln Road. And I'm walking in Lincoln Road and I saw this shop. And there was a lady outside who was basically saying, come, come on in, come on in, come and see what we have. So I went. And when I went into the shop, is every product that you could imagine from cannabis was there. Oils, you know, scents, candles, soap, you name it. Edibles. All of that was there. And they are outside hawking it to tourists like myself. Then come, come. We have over a million tourists that descend on this Twin Island Federation each year. And we are telling ourselves, well, so imagine they could buy it in Miami. But they come here to the Caribbean and we say they can't buy it. I just feel that our greatest fear right now is ourselves. Canada has legalized it. Totally. Now, yes, Canada is a big country. Uruguay has legalized it. Amsterdam is quite famous because for years they've had a district in the Netherlands where you can access marijuana. And I'm saying that even if we're not prepared to go the whole gamut of full legalization, which would really be my preference, but if we're not prepared to do that, then at least let us remove the barriers and introduce the medicinal 
and the scientific purpose that we've been talking and talking about. We keep talking about marijuana commission and well, by the time the marijuana commission does something, I'll be an older man than I am now. It is time for us to do something. That's why I said it was so bold of the agricultural officials in Nevis to have a tent at our agri, agri expo. I'm pretty sure now it's going to become more normal. We're hearing all this talk about, you know, smoking zones at concerts. And, I mean, you know what I think we need? We need licensing, regulation, taxation, education. That's my view. It takes me very nicely to your next question about CBI. Because for far too long, successive governments have been too dependent on citizenship by investment. The, the industry was started under PAM NRP administration way back in 1984. Dr. Douglas came into government, Labour, in 1995. And he made some changes, particularly coming towards the end of his tenure as Prime Minister, which saw an explosion in demand for CBI here in St. Kitts and Nevis. It was an explosion that came at a cost, because you remember, we ran ourselves into problems with the United States. We ran ourselves into problems with Canada. But we can't deny that that is what catapulted St. Kitts and Nevis to the next level in terms of CBI. Team Unity got in in 2015, and everything was CBI. CBI, 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 to the point where we had whole campaigns arguing about a fair share of CBI. Labor is now back in, having got back in in 2022. And when you look at the numbers in the budget, Mr. Barr, you realize, I believe the last year, CBI accounted for over 50% of the revenue that came in to the federal government. Now, if you have the goose that's laying the golden egg, you hope that the, that goose lays as much eggs as possible. But I have lamented publicly and privately that we are not putting in place any alternative. And why I'm saying that is because all of us can see the headwinds. You mentioned the EU. The EU just last week put out something saying that they will be re-evaluating visa-free access to the EU based on a number of factors. And you know, one of the factors, countries that have citizenship by investment programs where the people who are being granted citizenship have no real connection with that country. You see, let us understand that the EU and those organizations are not there to help us. They're there to help themselves. And they will forever come up with new policies, new prescriptions that are designed to keep us in our place. And our place has been to come to them as mendicants, cap in hand when we need anything. I am convinced of this because whenever it is that the Caribbean region and other regions, particularly regions of people of color, black people, have tried to raise their heads in this world, they've found new reasons why we should not. Africa, no different. You look at our financial services sector, where the EU, which is not an international organization, I want that to be clear. The EU is a grouping of countries in Europe. But the EU decide they're going to create their own blacklist, as they call it. They're going to punish countries that don't do what they want to do in terms of tax and other matters. We look at bananas. The Windward Islands economy was decimated because why? Big US company Chiquita say that Windward Islands bananas are getting preferential treatment and that is violative of the World Trade Organization standards. The result of that Windward Islands bananas gone through the Edos. Pressure, hardship on the people of the Windward Islands. No consideration for the fact that you can fit all of the banana farming in the Windward Islands in maybe to one farm that Chiquita has somewhere in Latin America. But no care 
And so those governments in the Windward Islands had to scramble to find an alternative because they were heavily dependent on bananas. Somebody reminded me recently that evening cricket, Mr. Bach, when we dominated the world, the cricketing nations quickly got together and introduced the one bouncer rule. And that was interesting because we had the quickest bowlers and the most intimidating bowlers in the world. That era when we had Croft, Holden, Marshall, Roberts, and who else? I'm missing one. Holden, Ghana, Jewel Ghana. And so we have to understand that they're just as we are see, sitting and seeking to come up with ways to advance ourselves, there are others who are sitting and seeking ways to keep us in our place. And how could the West Indies, I said the black fellows, come to England, go to Australia and do those and dominate? And I'm not saying this with any rancor. I think it's high time we just accept the world for the realities that we have. What we see every day. So if I can't beat you, <coughs> I change the rules. When the EU had Malta, Cyprus, Portugal, when the UK was attracting all of these billionaire Russians who were buying up wealthy areas in London like Mayfair and Knightsbridge, when Abramovich and those were buying football teams in England, incidentally now, they have money flowing in from the Middle East, the Qataris and the Saudis are now spending. They are always trying to find a way to build their economies to grow their countries, to do right by their people. Well then, Mr. Bard, why should small countries like St. Kitts and Nevis not have that same right? You think St. Kitts and Nevis could ever dare to say to Germany that your citizenship laws are offensive and you are not to be issuing passports to certain people? They would naturally laugh at us. They would say, we are a sovereign nation, you can't tell us to do that. But they feel that they can dictate to us. And they do it in subtle ways. And one of the ways is they keep talking about their rules, changing their rules. And I think that all of us must start to speak with one voice. I am no longer foreign minister, so I guess I have a little more freedom to speak in a way that is not as diplomatic. But I am tired of the efforts, which are clear efforts to derail the economic progress that is being made here. The Citizenship by Investment program wasn't a big deal when it served Europe and they benefited. The Golden Visa wasn't a big deal when it served London and the UK. The situation in Canada, I mentioned it before. When Hong Kong was reverting to Chinese rule, Canada came up with an interesting plan. Tell all the rich Hong Kong Chinese to come to Vancouver. And if you go there today, you know what the local Canadians say? The property prices are now too high for them to afford because so many flooded in to British Columbia that they drove up property prices. Do you think that was by accident? Or people in Hong Kong just say, let us go to cold British Columbia? government policy to attract them to bring them because you see that there's an economic benefit to having them well how come and think it's an Eves and Antigua and Dominica do it you blue vex and we are wrong and we are doing something that is improper so initially the EU started this talk about tax but it had a difficulty because our programs are not residency programs our programs are citizenship programs, and their tax system is based on residency. So they couldn't quite get the tax question to say we're avoiding tax. They couldn't quite get that. They started to talk about security. So, oh, you're giving people passport, we don't know who they are. Well, let us share the information. And so when LK Hewlett applies for Singh Sivis passport, we will send you the information so that you have access, you know who is applying. 
Let us use the joint JRCC system in Barbados. So all of the nations that are part of that system have access to the information. Let us use Canadian Banknote Company to produce the passports at the highest levels in terms of machine readable, in terms of being difficult to forge. They're the same people, I think, make currency. Let us do all that. So each time they raise an objection and you meet their concern, they shift. So now the concern seems to be, if you decide to grant citizenship to people who are not connected with your country, I don't know what that is supposed to mean. The state of Israel, for example, as I understand it, and correct me if I'm wrong, grants citizenship to Jews wherever they are. You can get citizenship there. It's my understanding. In fact, they even had some Ethiopian Jews, black people, who relocated to Israel and were able to settle there. Well, who am I to tell Israel? Israel, P.S. Daniel say he's a Jew. He'd never been to Israel. Oh, you don't give him a passport. We go back, Mr. Bart, to the duality that we see in the world. Rich, powerful countries set the rules for poor, weaker countries. And when poor, weaker countries innovate and come up with plans and programs and ideas to advance the interests of their people, those big, rich countries looking on, and they either want to take the idea from you or alternatively, they say you're doing too well. You're doing too well. So I don't want you to be sitting at the same table like me. No. You must sit at some other table and I will do what I need to do to keep you there. And we see it played out. We see the world moving slowly on some issues. Climate change. Slowly on a multidimensional vulnerability index. And away from what everybody acknowledges is a sterile measure of GDP per capita to determine a country's development status. All they need is a stroke of the pen to change it. But years, I was foreign minister for seven years, and for seven years in every speech, we talked about a multidimensional vulnerability index. Up to now, it can't happen. Why? Because they don't know. And so we just have to be, sometimes I think, we need a dose of realism. I'm not saying these things because I expect that it will change. I'm saying that our people need to understand. And as leaders, we need to educate our people. I did a piece recently when I said our future lies with Africa. And some people may not agree, and that's OK. But I genuinely feel that that is where we should be casting our net in Africa. I actually feel that we should be casting our net in Africa, even under the CBI program. That it is to Africa that we should be looking. And treating with Africans because they are our brothers, they are our sisters, they are our forefathers and engaging with them. Could you imagine with the 54 nations of the African Union, 55 now, Morocco has rejoined, and the 12 independent nations of CARICOM voting on bloc at the UN. Together, we make up more than a third of all countries in the world. Could you imagine? Could you imagine if we are able to persuade Latin America to join us? You then have a movement of people in international organizations that can really be transformative to champion some of the issues that are important to us. But I have said here before from this Russia, and I'm not joining anybody to cuss CBI. CBI has been a savior for Sinkins and Nevis. And while Nevis has not got its fair share, the reality is that when we look across the landscape of the country, we see the contribution that citizenship by investment has made. I was in Grenada recently, Mr. Bart, and I'm amazed at the hotels and all that in Grenada. Every single one being done through the citizenship by investment program in Grenada. Amazed. They just opened the six senses, I think, last week. They have an intercontinental sort of construction. They have Silver Sands. They have Silver Sands Beach House. All of these brand new properties built because of CBI. In fact, the same debate we are having here about CBI, they're having there. 
because people are saying that perhaps, just perhaps, they too are becoming too dependent on this industry. So for me, we need to diversify. We need to diversify not tomorrow, but yesterday. We need to slowly start to bring down that contribution of CBI to our national budget and slowly start to ramp up things like cannabis, things like renewable energy, geothermal in particular, things like agriculture, food processing, and of course, tourism will continue to play a significant role. But I think that we need to start to put things in place, not just talk about them, because the writing is on the wall. If the EU were to remove our visa-free access to Schengen tomorrow, it will be a massive blow to our CBI program. And that is the honest truth. And they know it. And that is why they're starting to introduce all this new language now about CBI. But I think we should stand up. We should engage respectfully. And we should show the EU that our programs are designed to assist in the developmental thrust of our people and our countries are not designed to harm them in any way. In fact, I don't see the harm to the EU. And sometimes it's useful to remind them that they themselves have benefited from similar type programs as ours. So, there will be pressure, but I think we need to be bold in confronting such pressures. CARICOM free movement, I have said what I had to say on that matter, Mr. Bart. I think that what we need is a special carve out for the smaller countries in CARICOM, particularly those in the OECS. And if those in the OECS don't feel the need that carve out, I think Sink It's a Nevis needs a carve out because we're the smallest of all of the CARICOM nations. We're the smallest. And I feel very strongly that the current system provides a safeguard. The current system is what they call a skills certificate system. So currently there is some freedom of movement into St. Gitts and Nevis, but it's for people with specific skill sets who come with the skill certificate. So the lawyers, the doctors, the nurses, people like those, the musicians and those people, I think are all covered. That is a control, a check that was put in from the start. When you now remove that and say everybody can come, I think that's where you run the risk of losing control. Because it would mean, if I understand it correctly, that once people show up at the border, you have no choice. You have to let them in. And once they come in, they can work, live, buy property, do all that they want to do. Now, as I said, and I continue to say, 10,000 divisions moving to Jamaica would not be noticed. <clears throat> people of Jamaica wouldn't even notice. I shared a joke. I believe I shared it the last time. You know, so I will get tired of my jokes. But they say a big Chinese company came in to build a highway in Jamaica and brought all Chinese workers from China, thousands of workers. When the highway was finished, Jamaica have the highway, Jamaica also have the workers because somehow they dispersed all across Jamaica. Nobody can find them. That anecdotally tells me that you could go to Jamaica and they wouldn't even notice. But what happens if 10,000 Jamaicans decide to come to Nevis, Mr. Bart? We double our population overnight. Ms. Hewlett mentioned housing. Where that going to come from? Ms. Thompson, I think it was a mention of health care. Was it you, Ms. Thompson? But there was a mention of health care. Oh, Ms. Hewlett again. How are we going to cope? Schools. Are we going to build new schools? How are we going to cope? And I think sometimes we need a dose of reality and practical application, a common sense approach to some of these issues. Where we say to the Caribbean, we are not opposed. And I want people to understand that, that we are not opposed. There is no stronger proponent of regionalism than me. I love the idea of being able to travel to the Caribbean and to see friends and family. And I love the idea of Caribbean people seeing the Caribbean as their own. But we have to be practical in terms of what we as an island 
and what we as the smallest country can do. Because just the other day we had a handful of people from Haiti who came in, 20 something. And when PS sent the bill for food and all of that, I said, boy, we need some help with this, 20 something people. Well, imagine if 2,000 had come. What would we do? And I keep saying and I reiterate because we have to recognize that Haiti, for example, as a CARICOM member, has over 10 million people in terms of its population. If just 10% of Haiti decide we're going to start to move to the Caribbean, that's a million strong. Not even Jamaica will be able to cope. Forget about Trinidad. A million strong decide we're going to roll through the Eastern Caribbean. The entire OECS region, the population of the entire OECS, is less than 700,000 people. Less than 700,000 when you add up St. Vincent, St. Lucia, Grenada, Dominica, St. Kitts, Antigua, Barbuda. So if you have just a million people decide, let us head from Haiti, let us head south. What does that translate into? And those are the realities I think our people need to confront and our leaders need to confront. That we have to have a carve out for small island, micro states like St. Kitts and Nevis. We can't be Jamaica, we can't be Trinidad because we don't have their landmass, we don't have their people, we don't have their resources. So I think it's just a practical approach. While we welcome our brothers and sisters from the Caribbean, we have to have some limits or we will be overrun. It's as simple as that. Any more questions for me? Okay. Nothing further. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being here. Thank you for putting up with my snifflers, snifflers and coughing. And I'm grateful that I've been able to get through this. So thank you all very much. We hope to see you again next month for another press conference. Thank you.